Natalia Rodina lived most of her life in the city of Minsk, the capital of Belarus. She escaped from there last year with the KGB hot on her heels. She's now living in exile, just across the border in Lithuania. Belarus is less than 20 miles away, but it might as well be in a different world. There's no chance Natalia will go back there anytime soon. To do so would be to risk more jail time and more beatings. Я здесь впервые чувствую себя в безопасности по сравнению за все за все годы, которые я занимаюсь журналистикой. Но я не могу сказать, что я счастлива, потому что я не на родине. Мне очень хочется вернуться в родную страну, потому что я потеряла все. Я потеряла родину, я потеряла возможность постоянно общаться со своей семьей, со своими родными. Я потеряла дом, в котором жила, мои книги. То есть вся моя жизнь осталась там. Natalia is a journalist and the editor of a website called Charter 97. It's the most popular news website in Belarus. And for the last 10 years, Natalia Radina has been reporting on the dire political situation in her home country. That is, until it almost cost her her life. This is downtown Minsk. Western journalists are rarely allowed to visit and report from here. So we sent in a team as tourists. What they found was eye-opening. It's as if the leadership didn't get the memo that the Soviet Union had collapsed two decades ago. Still standing tall in the center of the city, a giant statue of Lenin. The Belarusians endure brutal winters, and this one is no different. The constants here are the cold and the iron fists of a brutal regime. For the last 17 years, Belarus has been ruled by Alexander Lukashenko. He was the first freely elected leader after the country gained independence from the Soviet Union in 1991. He helped draft a new constitution that promised democracy and freedom. But it didn't take long for him to fall out of favor with his people and the West. When the Belarusian parliament tried to impeach him in 1996, he disbanded it and political opponents have been jailed, mysteriously disappeared, or found dead. He has cozied up to Venezuela's Hugo Chavez. He openly supports Iran. And recently he sided with the Assad regime in Syria. But there's much more. He once spoke in favor of Hitler. He's been called anti-Semitic, and has said he has nothing against lesbians, but would send gay men to a collective farm. In Russia, they no longer call the secret police the KGB. But in neighboring Belarus, Lukashenko wanted to keep the name. In 2006, he said anyone joining an opposition protest would be treated as a terrorist. He said, we will wring their necks as one might a duck. Then in 2010, the people found out he wasn't kidding. On the night of December 19th, hopes were high for the presidential election. There were nine opposition candidates to Lukashenko, and there was talk of an upset. Natalia Rodina was there. Тогда, 19 декабря, вечером на улице Минска вышло э, порядка от 30 до 50 тысяч человек. То есть весь центр Минск был заполнен людьми. А, милиция вначале ничего не предпринимала, и у людей было такое ощущение просто эйфории. И ощущение, что вот-вот в стране наконец-то произойдут перемены, и э, люди смогут избавиться от диктатуры. 